This is an introduction to Origin, an easy-to-use data analysis and graphing software used by over 100,000 scientists and engineers worldwide. The Origin workbook is used to organize both your data and your analysis results. The interface has both menus as well as toolbar buttons that provide easy access to tasks. To quickly learn what Origin can do, open the sample project file. This project shows a collection of graphs, as well as analysis in both Origin and Origin Pro. You can double-click on any graph to go to a subfolder that provides instructions on how to create the graph. For more details on how to use the sample project file, please watch the sample OPJ video. Now let me start with a new project. I'll bring in an ASCII file. Spark lines show a plot of the data in each column. This allows us to quickly see the noise spike in each column. Let me rename the long name of the first column. I'll then click on this cell to select it and drag the selection out to the very last column so that the long name will be auto-filled. Now the values in my first data row are a measurement parameter. We want to take this metadata and move it into the header area. And to do that, I right-click, and at the very bottom of the context menu, which is cut off on the movie, I choose Set as User Parameters. I no longer need this row here, so I can right-click and delete it. I can right-click on User Defined and rename that. The worksheet also has a vertical divider. We can place that to the right of the X column, the channel column, and then we can scroll through the amplitude columns while our X column remains fixed on the left. Now let me plot these nine Y columns. To do that, I can simply highlight the entire worksheet and then select Plot Multi-Curve 9 Panel. This gives us a graph with nine layers, one for each of our amplitude columns. Let's update our graph legend. to use our user parameter row. So now we have the temperature values displayed in the legend. Let's go ahead and zoom in on layer 2. I'm going to use the Z key on the keyboard, or this toolbar button over here, to use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and pan. So we're working with this layer right here. I can use this tool over here, our scale in, to rescale the axes to exclude the spike. Now let's copy the X and Y scale values to all the layers. To do that, I click to select the layer. I then right click and say Copy Format, Scales. I'm then going to zoom out to show the entire page, make sure nothing is selected, so that when I paste format, it will apply to all the graph layers. You can see that all nine layers now have the same scale. It's easy to see and compare the relative signal heights. The spikes are not shown and one can visually see how the data varies with temperature. Let's go ahead and work with just layer two. So to do that, I'm going to create a new graph window. I can select Graph, Extract to Graphs, I only want a graph of layer 2, so I change the value here, which currently would create a graph window for every layer. So I'm going to change that just to 2. If I don't check this checkbox here, it would maintain its size and location on the page, but I want it to fill up the entire page. We're going to have just the one layer. So I click OK, and I'll get a new graph window. In Origin, when you wish to work with a selected range of your data, you can use the Regional Data Selector. 
we drag out to select the range of data we wish to perform some analysis on. Now you can click on each of these endpoints to adjust the location. As I drag here, I can read the x-coordinate value in my data display window. I may also want to hold down the Z key again to zoom in a bit. And then I can adjust this further. When I've set that, I can hit Escape or Enter on the keyboard. Now any analysis you perform, such as Integrate, will recognize the selected data as input. If I view my results log, the area was output. Now let's try out one of Origin's gadgets to locate the peaks. Origin gadgets provide a quick and easy way to perform exploratory analysis. A dialog opens with several tabs where you can select your preferences for the tool. Let's set the baseline to none. Let's look at the peak finding settings. We can change the method. I'm going to click OK and the ROI box is drawn on the graph. Now the ROI defines the range. So I can click on it to select just this next group of peaks here. The peaks are found and automatically labeled. Gadget's functionality is accessed from this flyout menu. Before I do that, let me close the data display window. So I can click on this button here. And if you have Origin Pro, you can now fit the data using these peak finding settings. Let's do a Gauss fit. A report table is output to the graph, and the fit lines are drawn automatically on the graph. At this point, we can close the ROI. The green lock on the graph is an indicator that some analysis was performed and can be automatically updated. If you left-click on the lock, you can choose Change Parameters. The Analysis dialog in this case, the NLFIT dialog opens. I can go to the Parameters tab, and if we look at just the Width parameter, the width gets initialized to almost the same value for all six peaks. To ensure in the final fit results that they are the same value, you can share the width parameter. Let's click Fit to update our results. You can see from the report table that the width is the same, we can also click on the lock again and go to the results. That brings us to the workbook where our data was and the sheet that contains the report sheet. So if I scroll through here, here's my raw data. These sheets were added to store the results. So our width parameter is the same. The last sheet in the book is the data for the fit curve. There are many more video tutorials available on the product DVD, on our website, as well as on YouTube, including one on how to use the Quick Peaks gadget. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.